This was a heavy week. Um, we saw so many um, images of civilians being targeted. You've been on the ground talking to soldiers. Talk to me a little bit about where things stand now. And you talked about the unity. Talk a bit about what you're hearing from soldiers. Yeah, we've been out, Yamich, out to the front outside of Kyiv, especially to the northeast of here. And of course, the Ukrainian forces have famously fought the Russians to a standstill against the odds and certainly against many predictions in Washington, D.C. and around the world. Talking to, to soldiers out there at the front, the more professional soldiers holding the front line, you know, they're very much so of the opinion that effectively a lot of the military aid that's coming in is helping and is working. Things like the anti-tank missiles, that the, the handheld uh, rocket systems, like the javelins or the man pads, those are helping, they tell us, to take out tanks, to take out helicopters. We've also seen, you know, a, a, a huge amount of recruitment here into the volunteer forces. There is a huge sense of, of the moral high ground, of unity, and of just an incredible amount of solidarity uh, across the nation with these troops. So they certainly have the morale on their side. Well, you're talking about an incredible amount of solidarity. That comes, of course, in the face of Russia targeting so many vulnerable places, including at one point a school for visually impaired children. What's the impact of so many civilians and vulnerable people, children, being targeted and killed in these attacks? People here are absolutely horrified. You know, they watch the TV news themselves. Uh, they're, they're online. They're watching what's happening in cities like Mariupol uh, in the south or Kharkiv in the east where essentially you're having these cities hammered, civilian areas absolutely hammered by artillery and airstrikes from, from the Russians. And people here are very, very aware that that is an, a war crime, that it's illegal to specifically target civilians and civilian areas. There's a, there's a real sense here uh, of, of the, this nation of people, um, certainly these cities that are holding out, somehow being punished collectively for that action. But we're also seeing just people coming together in an incredible way. I've never, in all my years of war reporting, I've never seen uh, people showing up like this in, in, in very individual acts of kindness. It's not just, you know, famously the, the organization of the volunteers here with organizations and those who are going to the front and joining the, the armed forces, but also you'll get to areas where there's a, a, a humanitarian corridor negotiated where some of the, the civilians are able to escape the fighting. And you might just find locals from the, the local apartment buildings will come down with a tray of sandwiches or hot soup outside Kiev, uh, outside Lviv train station where people are coming from Kiev uh, so they can give them a hot meal. You're seeing these spontaneous acts of solidarity and kindness amongst Ukrainians. They seem incredibly united in the face of all of this.